So, uh, you know what day it is? It's new gun day. Let's go. Okay, let's get started with the case itself. Uh, the first thing you're going to notice is that this case is huge compared to other gun cases. I can't even get it completely in the frame. But uh, anyway, it's got the Walter branding on the front here, as well as it's got these like raised sections kind of on the bottom and on the top that echo the slide serrations on the PDP itself. Opening it up, we've got a bunch of stuff in here. Up on top, we have the usual Walter paperwork and the cable lock that no one uses. Just south of that, we have some grip modules that are interchangeable with the one that comes on the gun to tailor the grip to the shooter's hand just a little bit better. Then we've got the two magazines that come with the weapon. They have metal bodies and plastic base plates. And as others have noted, they look like they're made by Mechgar, even though they're not marked as such. Uh, they've got blue followers too, so they're more easily distinguished from other mags you might have in your case. Both of them hold uh, 18 rounds, and Walter also includes this mag loader as well, which aids in loading mags at the range. In this little baggie, we've got a chamber flag that I already took out, as well as the tool for the screws that hold the optic plate in, and this tiny little tool right here that you see, that is for adjusting the elevation and windage on the sights that come on the gun. All right now for the PDP itself. It's worth it to note here that the PDP comes in two different frame sizes and two different barrel lengths, and that's how they're referred to. The frames are either compact or full-sized, and the available barrel lengths are 4, 4.5, four and, and 5 inches. As I mentioned earlier, this is the full-sized PDP frame with the 4.5 inch barrel. This puts it at about the same size as a Glock 17 for reference. I thought this would be a good middle ground since there are so many models to choose from in the PDP lineup. Alright, now that we've got the gun out, let's do a quick safety check. We've got no mag in it, and we've got... Nothing in the chamber there. Okay. So now doing that safety check, that brings me to one of the most prominent things that's on the gun, and that's the slide serrations. Uh, Walter's really proud of these. Uh, you remember they put them on the case. They're calling them super terrain serrations, and they're very prominent. They're very easy to use, both front and rear. Uh, for me, it looks like Walter started out with like a really big, chunky piece of metal for the slide and just machined out these pieces for the serrations and here and here along the nose to make it like a lot slimmer and to make the serrations really prominent. They've also chamfered the sides here. I don't know if you can see that on the front and the back so that they don't really cut into your hand when you're using them to manipulate the slide. Another of the new features we have is the grip texture. Walter is calling this their performance duty texture and it's a really interesting texture that's pretty smooth when you brush your hand across it, but it comes really nice and grippy when you firmly grip the weapon. Speaking of gripping the weapon, uh, Walther also added this small angle at the base of the grip that's supposedly designed to help the weapon point more naturally with a slide mounted optic on it because you can get some more torque with your pinky on it like that. One of the best parts of the PDP is the trigger. Uh, Walther is calling this the performance duty trigger and it's an improvement or evolution of the PPQ's already very good trigger. For the PDP, Walther says that they have shortened the travel and made the brake more tactile. So we'll check that out here. So we've got just a little bit of take up, a nice solid wall, and a really short break. We'll run the slide, and there's your reset right there. One more time. So reset, break. Really short travel, really nice. Okay, let's take a quick second to measure the, the weight of the trigger here. So I've got my trigger pull gauge. Put it on the bow of the trigger here. I've got just under six pounds for that one. One more time. That one's just at five and a half pounds. And we'll do one more. That one is also right at five and a half pounds. A couple other notable features of the PDP is a full-sized pick rail up here on the front with a couple slots on there. And the sights themselves are polymer three-dot sights. There you go. And these are notable because they are adjustable for windage and elevation here on the back sight. Okay, and now that brings us to what is, for me, one of the most notable features of the PDP. And that is that it comes optics ready from the factory. I saved this part for last because there's been a little bit of controversy about the PDP and its optics cut, and I wanted to point out how Walter has changed the PDP to address that. The PDP mounts optics by the use of adapter plates that are provided by Walter, which interface with the cut in the slide that's under this plastic cover. Actually, you know what, we'll go ahead and take this plastic cover off now, because under it is what I think is the most significant part of this version of the PDP. 
Okay, now that the cover is off, one thing that we see right away is that the cut for the optic is really deep. I mean, see that there? It's so deep that the striker channel right there is actually partially exposed. We also see one of the biggest changes that Walters made in the newer versions of the PDP, which is these load bearing sections that have been added to the optic mounting area. Now, when the PDP first came out, there was a lot of complaint in the shooting community that the optic cut was completely flat here, which meant that there was no interface between the slide and the optic plate. This meant that all the forces on the optic and the plate caused by the recoiling of the slide were being borne by just the screws holding the plate on. Eventually, these screws were fail since they're not designed to withstand shearing forces or the front and back motion, and owners would end up with their optic falling off and some broken screws that you'd have to remove from the slide somehow. Walter listened to these complaints, and the newer models of the PDP, like this one, have these cuts that now allow the slide itself to help absorb some of those forces that are being exerted during recoil. Uh, most notably, we've got the large center spine here that supports the optic against side-to-side -side forces, and we have these two cutouts here that interface with the mounting plate lugs to support against fore and aft forces. Speaking of that plate, Walter has redesigned that as well to work with the new optic cut. Uh, most notable are the addition of these lugs here on the bottom that interface with the slide to mitigate those fore and aft recoil forces. The sting is still made of steel, it's still free from Walter, and you still need to contact them after your purchase to get the plate that matches your optic footprint. This means that new owners still have to wait a while before being able to mount an optic to this weapon. Mine took about a week total, which isn't bad considering that I submitted the order on Friday. And that is my first impressions of the Walter PDP. Next up for this thing is a trip to the range to get some rounds through it, and you guys will see that in my 100 round range review coming up pretty soon. After that, we're going to start adding mods to it, because you know I can't keep anything stocked for very long. If you're interested in that, and you should be, make sure that you're subscribed and make sure you've got that bell rung. Um, as always, check the description for a link to Brownells where you can find the PDP and all the accessories that I'm going to end up throwing on it. There'll also be a link in the description to the Practical Tactical blog, which has more information and articles that I think you're going to find really interesting. That's all I've got for you today. So until next time, stay safe. Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. Today I just wanted to do a quick video on the PDP and some of the details about it that I think aren't really covered all that well in a lot of the videos that I've seen on YouTube. Now, before we get started, I just wanted to note again that everything I talk about in regards to the PDP will be linked in the blog post in the description below. Now, the first thing that I wanted to talk about is how Walther designed the PDP to be a modular weapon system. Now, that means that any of the slide lengths that the PDP comes in will fit on any of the frame sizes that the PDP comes in. So, for example, this is a four and a half inch barrel slide and a full size frame. If I had a compact frame with a four inch slide, I could swap the slides and frames over and they would still run and function as normal. Now it's worth it to note that they might look a little bit funny, especially if you had a slide that's shorter than the frame that you had, or a slide maybe that's way longer than the frame you had, the dust cover wouldn't completely cover the recoil system, or vice versa, but it would function normally. The second thing I want to talk about is that Walther is currently offering direct milled slides for the PDP that are cut for various popular optic footprints. Now, these slides are footprint specific, so you need to know the footprint of your optic before you order one of these, or you risk the optic not fitting on the slide. Now, the difference here, as I mentioned, is that they're direct milled, so these will not use the plate system that you see on this PDP. The optic will fit directly to the slide and will screw directly to the slide. Another thing to note is that these are bare slides, so when you get it in, you're going to need to take out all the internals of your existing slide drop them into that slide, transferring them over, and drop that onto your existing frame. You're also gonna need a specific extractor plunger assembly, which Walter has on its site. Again, all this is gonna be linked in the blog post in the description. Um, one last thing to note is that these appear to be a limited run, so if you want one of these direct milled slides, you're probably gonna to wanna to buy one sooner than later. Now, the next thing I wanted to talk about is the accessory rail. Again, I have the four and a half inch slide and the full size frame, which I think is gonna be one of the most popular configurations of this. From the front of the frame to the most forward part of the trigger guard, this is a distance of about two and a half inches. So if you want to mount something here that's flush, completely flush with the front of the frame and the slide, it's going to have to have a maximum length of no more than two and a half inches. Now, the next thing I wanted to look at are the factory sights and the fact that they are adjustable for both elevation and windage. The adjustments are made back here on the factory rear sight. You can see some screws there. You turn the screws to adjust elevation and windage. There are no adjustments on the front side. It's all back here. The next thing I wanted to talk about with the factory sights is the fact that they are not tall enough to co-witness with most optics because of this plate mount. This Swamp Fox Justice that I have mounted up on here has a pretty low deck height. And even with that, the factory sights, they won't co-witness with this. As you can see, you can't even see them in the window. 
you can see the dot, but that's pretty much it. Now, one last thing to mention with the sights is the fact that they are Glock compatible. So if you want higher sights that will co-witness with your optic, like I do, you can just pick up some suppressor height sights and put them on here that are Glock compatible and they'll drop right onto the PDP slide. Now, continuing with parts compatibility, the PDP is the successor to the PPQ. It's kind of an evolution of the PPQ design and as such, it shares a good number of parts with the PPQ. Walther has a page on their website that talks about the parts compatibility between the PPQ and the PDP. And again, I'll throw that in the blog post linked in the description. The one thing that I did want to mention though was the magazines. Walter notes that PPQ M2 magazines will fit the PDP compact directly, but they will not fit the PDP full sized. So that was just a couple of things I think that are interesting or good to know about the PDP that aren't necessarily covered in any videos I've seen. Coming up soon on the channel, we've got more videos with the GX4 as well as another gun in the Micro 9 concealed carry category. So if that interests you, make sure that you're subscribed to the channel. If you know someone that has a PDP or is looking at one, share them this video because it's got information that I think they can use. Throw me a like or a comment if you appreciate what I'm doing. And don't forget to ring that bell on your way out. Otherwise, that's all I've got for you this time. So until next time, stay safe. Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. Uh, a few weeks ago, we took a first look at the Walter PDP and how its optics mounting system has been revised by Walter after receiving some feedback from owners about the possible flaws in its design. Today, we're gonna to go ahead and mount an optic on the PDP and talk about some other steps or considerations you should think about when mounting an optic, especially if it's your first time. First though, I wanted to do a quick overview or recap of how this second gen PDP optic mounting is different from the first generation. Originally, Walter designed the PDP with an optic system that had the bottom of the mounting plate as well as this pocket for the slide both completely smooth, so that the only interface between them was the screws that held the optic mounting system in place. This resulted in all the force of the slide reciprocating being borne by those optic mounting screws, which are not the best at bearing a shearing force. Some owners had these screws break or fail and subsequently had their optic detached from the slide, which obviously is suboptimal. Walther has subsequently redesigned the optic mounting system for the PDP and it has incorporated sections in the slide and on the optic mounting plate that interface together and take the stress off the mounting screws. Most notable is this large center spine that runs down the middle of the slide pocket and the corresponding slot in the optic plate, as well as the locating lugs here on the slide and the plate as well. Together, these mitigate the side-to-side -side forces as well as the fore and aft forces that are exerted on the mounting system, and they allow the screws to just secure the plate to the slide like they're supposed to. Mounting an optic starts with making sure that you have the right plate for your optic. Optics have different footprints, and each mounting plate is footprint specific. Most optics will tell you which footprint they have, either somewhere on the packaging or through some quick searching online. It's critical that the optic plate matches put footprint or the optic will never mount properly. Now it is worth it to note that plates do not ship with the PDP and new owners will need to fill out a form on Walther's website in order to request a plate that matches their optic. I requested this plate on a Friday and took about five business days to land in my mailbox. The optic that I'm using today is the Swamp Fox Justice, which has an RMR footprint, and we're also gonna be mounting the accessory iron side shield that goes over the optic. I picked both of these guys up from Brownells. So in a nutshell, Mounting the optic to the slide is relatively simple. We're gonna put the plate on the slide and then we're gonna put the optic to the plate. However, there are a couple considerations that you should think of before you start doing this. Number one, always make sure your weapon is unloaded when you work on it, safety first. Number two, always check to see if the plate needs to be mounted to the slide first before you screw the optic to it. It's super easy to get really excited and you know go ahead and mount up your optic to the plate and then realize, just like here, that there is no way to access the mounting screws that actually secure the plate to the slide once the optic is mounted. So you're gonna have to end up taking it off again anyway. Number three, verify which screws you need to use to mount the plate to the slide and the optic to the plate. These may differ depending on the optic that you're running. I am going to be using the factory Walther screws to secure the plate to the slide and the screws provided with the justice to mount the optic to the plate. Number four, have some blue thread locker or Loctite on hand to help secure those screws. These parts are riding the slide and the slide cycles very violently and the screws can easily come loose without the added assistance of a thread locker. You won't be seeing me use a thread locker here because I'm just kind of demoing the assembly, but definitely use it when you assemble your optic and slide. Number five or four B, I guess you could call it. Uh, on a related note, don't use red or high temp thread locker. That stuff is a lot stronger than the regular blue stuff and it needs to be heated to remove and can be a real pain to undo. Uh, this is going to be very important for you if you need to unmount your optic in order to change the battery because you're going to have a really bad time. Number six, do not crank down as hard as you can on these mounting screws. If you go crazy and crank down on these, you can damage them or strip them out or at the very least make your life very difficult if and when you need to remove this optic. 
always follow the recommended torque specs for your optic and for your firearm. I'm going to be torquing the screws that hold the plate to the slide to 18 inch pounds as noted in the PDP owner's manual and I'll be torquing the screws that hold the optic to the plate to 15 inch pounds as it says in the justice owner's manual. And last but not least number seven it can be very helpful to make some small witness marks on the screws with a paint marker when you're done so you have an easy at a glance reference to make sure the screws are still snug. Now YouTube doesn't like showing firearms being modified so I'm going to mount this up off camera but I'm going to go over what I'm going to do step by step just so you see it. We're going to take the slide and we're going to take the slide plate that I got, put it on the slide, and then we're going to take these screws and put them in here and torque them down to 18 inch pounds as noted in the PDP owner's manual. After that, we are going to take the Swamp Fox Justice Optic, slide it into the iron side shield, place that onto the optic plate, and then here you see the holes, we're going to use these screws there to mount the optic to the plate and torque those down to 15 inch pounds as shown in the Swamp Fox owner's manual. Okay, all done. Everything is mounted up and torqued down. All we need to do now is drop our barrel back in place and our recoil spring back in place. And we're just gonna drop this back onto the weapon and we are good to go. Now, after everything is mounted and torqued down, don't forget to go and zero the optic. It's not gonna be perfectly lined up straight out of the box, no matter what anyone tells you. Take it to a range and zero it according to the manufacturer's instructions. It'll give you a chance to get some trigger time in and practice with the optic, which is never a bad thing. If this is your first pistol mounted optic, take the time to get used to presenting the gun so that the dot appears in your field of view. That's something that I definitely had to get used to and a lot of people find challenging, and this is a great time to practice. So that's all I've got for you this time, but we do have videos coming up on the Taurus 856 mods and the first impressions of the Taurus G3, as well as an introduction slash continuation of the Home Defense PCC build. So if you are not subscribed or you don't have that bell rung, I highly suggest you do that. If you're interested in the PDP or the Swamp Fox Justice or the Ironside Shield, you can pick all of those up at Brownells. I will drop links in the description below. Don't forget to check out the Practical Tactical blog. I will drop a link to that below as well. It's got a lot more practical information that I think you're gonna find useful. Again, that's all I've got for you this time. So until next time, stay safe. Today, we're wrapping up the long-term test of the Walter PDP. Let's go. Welcome back to the channel, everyone. As some of you may remember, the Walter PDP is one of the first guns that we got in for review. We did a first look and then we added some upgrades and now we're gonna take a look at how it's performed over the last five months. Then I'll give you a few things I liked about it and a few things that I learned I didn't like so much about it. Before we get started, I did wanna mention that I will be linking all of the PDP videos in the description below as those will go into more details about the PDP and the upgrades that it's got. This video is gonna be more of a recap of its performance and my overall impressions of it. Now, a quick reintroduction to the PDP. It's Walter's flagship handgun with a polymer frame and a striker fired action. This is a 2022 production PDP, which makes it what Walter is now calling the 2.0 version. The PDP comes in either a compact or a full-sized frame and is available with barrel lengths of four, four and a half, and five inches. This one here is the full-size frame coupled with the four and a half inch barrel and slide. It has an overall length of eight inches, an overall height of 5.7 inches, and an overall width of 1.34 inches. Weight on this unloaded is 22.3 ounces. It comes from Walther with two 18 round magazines, which gives it an overall capacity of 19 rounds, including the one in the chamber. As I mentioned, it's striker fired and it has a rated trigger pull weight of 5.6 pounds out of the box. All PDPs come optic ready from Walther and they also all have a rail section for mounting accessories as well. The first thing I wanted to talk about is what I think the best part of the PDP is, and that's reliability. Being a gun that's designed to be a duty or a home defense gun, the PDP needs to be reliable above all else. This PDP has had a little over 1,700 rounds through it at the time of filming this video over the course of about five months. It's seen a relatively even mix of 115 grain commercial range loads, as well as 147 grain full metal jacket hand loads that I worked up to run through it. It's had about 400 rounds of steel cased ammo through it as well, and also a little over 100 hollow point self-defense loads, 20 of those being 147 grain Federal HSTs, and the rest being 115 grain Barnes TAC XPDs. I am very happy to say that the PDP lives up to what I would expect from it in terms of reliability. At one point after that initial impressions video, I ran almost a thousand rounds through it without cleaning it, including all 400 of those steel case rounds, to see if it would affect operation at all. The PDP didn't even blink at that, at running dirty and nasty, it just kept on working. I've had absolutely zero malfunctions with the PDP in my time with it. 
no feeding issues, no ejecting issues, no parts breaking, no stoppages of any kind, it just runs. One more thing to note in terms of reliability is the optic mount. After a bit of controversy with the original design, Walter made some changes to the optic mounting system for this 2.0 model. I go into detail about these changes in the optic mounting video, which again is linked below. I mounted up this Swamp Fox Justice and Ironside Shield combo to test the optic mounting system, and I've had zero problems with that as well. Even with me using the optic to rack the slide and repeatedly banging it on a table to test the Ironside Shield, the plate mount is rock solid. Neither the plate or the optic have moved at all in the time they've been there. As far as accuracy is concerned, I can only say that the limiting factor in accuracy with the PDP was definitely my skill as a shooter. I had the PDP out to the limit of my local range, which was 25 yards, and as long as I was doing my part as a shooter, it always put the rounds where I was aiming. One thing I did notice is that the PDP has a bit more muzzle flip than other 9mm polymer guns this size, which I think might be down to the kind of high bore axis that it has. I'll talk a little bit more about that later. Now, for some things I found I like about the PDP. The first thing that I will always tell people I like about this gun is the trigger. The action is very short, very crisp, and the reset is very tactile. Additionally, the trigger shoe is nice and flat and wide, which I really like about it. One thing I wanted to call out is the trigger pull weight. Uh, it came out of the box a little over 5.5 pounds for me, but it's definitely lightened up as it's broken in, so I want to do a quick test for you guys to see exactly what it's at now. First, we're going to make sure that we're clear, and we are. I've got my handy dandy pull gauge here, so let's take a look. That one is about four and a half pounds. That one is just under four and a half pounds. That one is just, I think right at four and a half pounds. So all in all about four and a half pound trigger, which is a pound less than stock. And I think that's doing really good. The last thing I like about the PDP is the shape of the grip. It takes some getting used to, but it's very ergonomic when you do get used to it. It's a great shape for my hand. It's got the right width for me, and with this medium back strap, it's got a great length of pull for me as well. Now, not every gun is perfect, and there are definitely some things about the PDP that I learned I didn't like as much after spending some time with it. I previously mentioned the high bore axis of the PDP and the resulting muzzle flip versus other guns this size. That's probably the first thing I would list as something that I found I didn't like. Again, this could be mitigated with proper shooting technique or maybe even a compensator. Another one of the things that I didn't really love is the shelf on the right side of the gun where the back side of the mag release is, kind of right here. I know that this is there so that the mag release can be flipped left to right for left-handed shooters, but I found that it really digs into my finger and knuckle when I'm shooting and it gets kind of annoying over the course of a range day. It's not really much that I can do to fix this short of maybe Walter making a model with a paddle release, so I'm just living with it at this point. Now, another thing I learned I didn't quite love about the PDP is the texturing on the front strap. It's nowhere near as aggressive as the texturing on the rest of the grip, and when my hands are sweaty from being hot or, you know, running this thing a long time, my fingers tend to shift on the front strap because of the lack of grip. This may just be particular to me, as I like my grips very aggressive, but it is something that I didn't like. The last thing I don't like about the PDP is something that I think could be an easy fix, and that's the sights. While I appreciate that they're adjustable, there's two things about them that I really don't like. They're plastic, and they're not tall sights. Walter makes all models of the PDP optic ready from the factory, and they make a big deal out of this in their marketing. So I think that they should come with a set of tall sights out of the box that will co-witness with most optics. Additionally, with a gun this well made, a set of plastic sights just screams cost cutting and it's really just a bad look. While installing a set of sights is an easy fix, I think that's an extra cost for the user that shouldn't necessarily have to exist. So that's it, 1700 rounds and five months with the Walter PDP. I knew I liked this gun right when I picked it up for the first time and I've just gotten to like it even more as I've spent more and more time with it. It's rock solid and 100% reliable, and it continues to be one of my go-to home defense weapons. Needless to say, I would not hesitate to recommend the PDP to anyone looking for a do-it-all pistol that they can trust their life to. What's next for this thing? Probably more upgrades, particularly that dynamic performance trigger that Walther offers. If you're interested in seeing those upgrades, let me know in the comments. Also, let me know what other handguns you'd like to see on the channel in the future. Throw me a like if you appreciate what I'm doing, and if you know someone looking for a good do-it-all gun, share them this video. I'm here to get easy to understand and approachable information out to as many people as possible. And the interaction from you all is what helps spread these videos as far as possible. Also, don't forget to check the description where you'll find a link to the blog where I keep links to everything I mentioned in this video. That's all I've got for you this time. So until next time, stay safe. One upgrade that I think is a must do for your Walther PDP. Let's take a look. Welcome back to the channel, everyone. 
Today, I wanted to do a quick video on one upgrade that I think is a must do for anyone that owns a Walter PDP. Before we get started, I've got a couple notes. First, as usual, everything that I talk about in my videos can be found on the blog links page, which is linked in the description below. Second, the upgrade that we're looking at today does not in any way alter the internal function of this weapon. It's an external only change. Furthermore, similar parts are available directly from Walther, so we're not altering this firearm in any way that cannot also be had directly from the manufacturer. And last but not least, if you appreciate what I'm doing here, consider throwing me a super thanks. From the guns to the optics and especially to the ammo, this channel is entirely self-funded out of my own pocket, so any and every little bit definitely helps. So what is this wondrous must-have upgrade? Well, sights. Specifically, tall sights that allow a co-witness with an optic, or allow sighting over a suppressor even. From the factory, the PDP comes with a set of sights that's relatively standard. They can be adjusted for windage and elevation, but otherwise they're pretty unremarkable. This is even more obvious when you take into account that every PDP is optic ready from the factory. The factory sights are nowhere near tall enough to be able to co-witness with an optic. As a result, the user is left with essentially no sighting system in the event that their mounted optic goes down. Now thankfully, the PDP was designed to work with Glock style sights, so remedying this issue is cost effective and relatively simple. There are seemingly countless options for Glock style sights, so finding a set that's taller height for the PDP is as easy as a trip to most sporting goods stores or even a couple minutes searching Amazon or eBay. Now, for the purposes of this video, I picked up a set of Ameriglow GL429s. These are XL height sights that are completely blacked out. The front sight is serrated for glare reduction and the back is just completely blank and completely blacked out. No other markings on this. This is my preferred setup for co-witness sights as it lets my brain more easily like ignore the sights even though they're always in my field of view. If you prefer a three dot or even a night sight setup, again, the options are out there for you. It just takes a little bit of digging. This is just my personal preference. These sights will give you a very low co-witness with most optics, as you can see. Um, that's what I think most people are looking for and why I chose this height. I personally prefer an absolute co-witness and if you want that, you're gonna wanna pick up a set that's slightly taller than these. I will roll in the info on these sites somewhere here on the screen. The MSRP for these is 60 bucks, but you can easily find these for under $50 with a very minimal amount of digging. Mounting the Ameriglow sites is straightforward and can be done at home with the right tools. I can't show you the installation, but I can walk you through it for the most part. First though, you are gonna need a few specialized tools. The first thing you're gonna need is a Glock front sight tool. As I mentioned in the Taurus G3 upgrades video, it's technically possible to replace the front sight without it, but having one makes it a million times easier. The other tool you're gonna need is a rear sight pusher tool. Some sights you can get away with using a punch and a hammer to install them, but this combination is definitely not gonna be one of them. The Ameriglow sight is a very tight fit into this PDP dovetail, which makes this a necessity. Also, make sure you invest and get a quality sight pusher tool as the cheap Amazon ones are likely gonna break or damage the slide with the amount of force that is gonna be needed to get this guy into place. Now, with the tools taken care of, the first step is to break down the PDP and remove the barrel and recoil system as you normally would for cleaning and maintenance. Okay, now the PDP is down to its bare slide, we can start taking off the sights. We'll start with the front one there. The factory front sight, which I have here, as you can see is a Glock style, so it unscrews from the bottom and then it lifts up off of the slide. And then the Ameriglow sight drops in from the top and screws in from the bottom right there. Now, as for the rear sight, it gets pressed out of this dovetail mount and the Ameriglow gets pressed in into its place. Now, I also have a few things for you to consider when you're mounting these sights as well. In the front, there's this polymer spacer here that the PDP runs that needs to be moved out of the way to be able to access that bottom screw. I just kind of grabbed it with my fingers and moved it out. When straight. Second thing to consider, it's always smart to put a little Loctite or thread locker on that front sight screw. As you can see with the factory sight, that screw is the only thing holding that thing in. So make sure you've got a dab of thread locker on that guy. Last, don't forget to take your PDP out to the range and verify that the sights are lined up and zeroed once they're installed. There are precious few things in this world that are less useful than a set of sights that are not zeroed. Now with those sights mounted up and the weapon reassembled, I would say that my one biggest gripe about the PDP is pretty much taken care of. Not only do we have sights that co-witness with that optic, but they're also made out of metal and they offer a little more durability. Next time on the channel, we're gonna be taking a look at mounting an optic onto one of the concealed carry test guns. So if that interests you, make sure you're subscribed and you've got that bell rung. If you know someone with a PDP, go ahead and share them this video because it really helps the algorithm. 
Throw me a like or a comment if you appreciate what I'm doing. And if you really appreciate what I'm doing, again, think about throwing me a super thanks. That's all I've got for you this time. So until next time, stay safe. Today, a quick look at an outside the waistband holster for the PDP. Let's go. Welcome back to the channel, everybody. Today, I wanted to take a quick look at a holster option for the PDP that I've been using for the last few months. Now, before we get started, the usual couple of notes. Everything that I talk about in my videos, like this holster, can be found on the blog links page, which is always linked down in the description. Second, we are not looking at any firearms today, and the one that we do have on the table has been safety checked and is not loaded. We also don't have any ammo or magazines present on the table. And last but not least, if you appreciate what I'm doing here, consider throwing me a super thanks. Anything and everything that you see on the channel, from the holster to the PDP, to the ammo and the optics and just all that stuff is all self-funded out of my own pocket. Now, the PDP needs no introduction on this channel. It's become one of my favorite handguns in the time that I've had it. For those that don't know, it was one of the first guns we reviewed on this channel. Uh, I got it from Brownells and I've done a number of videos on it to date and I will link all of those down in the description for you. The last time you saw it on this channel, it was getting a set of tall sights to co-witness with the optic. And after that video, the plan was to carry it kind of all winter long and see how having something so much bigger than my normal carry weapon would be like. Now, in order to find that out, I picked up this holster for it. This is an OWB or outside the waistband holster from Slim Fit Holsters. Specifically, it's their Victorious model. And I decided on it because I've had great experiences with Slim Fit for other holsters that I own, like this appendix rig for my other winter carry weapon, an MMP45. And I wanted to try an outside the waistband rig from them as well. One big benefit to them is that they offer light bearing compatibility with a lot of weapon light brands, and they're one of the only companies that currently offer support for Olights. Side note, yes, the light on this rig is an Olight. I know that there's a lot of strong feelings about them, both for and against, and I'll let you all box that out in the comments. For now, I'll just say that I've had this for about four years, and I've never had an issue with it. I chose an outside the waistband holster because I almost always carry outside the waistband in the winter. Uh, we get pretty cold and snowy where I am, so I'm always wearing like a big puffy jacket when I'm outside, and that makes it easy to conceal even when I'm carrying outside the waistband. Now, as you can see, I opted to get it in just basic black Kydex. Uh, I got one and a half inch belt loops, and I got colored finishing washers since they were free upgrade. As far as options go, I chose to have it with an optic cut and an open muzzle end. I did this because the PDP will always be wearing an optic, and I wanted the option to add a thread to barrel later on. I paid 65 bucks for this rig, plus shipping, which I think was like 10 bucks, so maybe like 75 bucks out the door. Now, just taking a quick cruise around the holster itself, it looks really well made. It's got good quality, like nice thick kydex on the front and the back. The cuts are all clean, and the edges are all like really nicely finished and rounded off, as you can see. The hardware is solid. It's held up like really well over the few months that I, you know, used it over the winter. It fits the PDP really well, which I'll show you. It covers a trigger guard like you'd expect it to, and there's plenty of clearance for the optic and for the end of the muzzle there. It does shroud the front sight too, which is really nice. Now, nothing is perfect on this channel, and I do have a few nits to pick. Now, the first of these is the retention. The clamping force itself is good, but I do miss the solid like click that I get with the MMP45 in the appendix rig. Now, I understand that it's a different style of holster and that might change this, but at the same time, it's the exact same light and the retention looks like it indexes off of the QD latch, just like the other ones. So it should feel similar, at least in my mind. I would just like it to feel a little bit more tactile. The second thing that I noticed on my holster is that there's a lot of extra space where the holster covers the head of the light. And I mean a lot, like this is probably like almost an inch. Now, I'm not really sure why that's there and it doesn't really affect performance but it is noticeable and it does add a little bit of length to the holster. Now, the last thing I wanna talk about is the range of adjustment for cant or for carry angle. As you can see, there's only three holes on one side and there's only two on the other side, which means that I cannot get this to ride as canted as I would like it to. This made adjusting to the holster and practicing with it a little bit harder than necessary since I had to kind of reprogram my brain to make sure that the weapon is more vertical than I'm used to going in and out of the holster. I really wish this had at least like one more level of adjustment on either side or even just on one side, like down here, like there's a hole here, maybe just one more level of adjustment. Overall, I think that this is a decent holster, but I don't think that it quite lived up to the expectations that I had for it after my experience with that appendix rig from that same company. I'm gonna keep using it for range days and stuff, but I think I'll probably try something a little bit different for next winter. So those are my thoughts on the SlimFit Victorious holster for the PDP with an Olight PL2 mounted on it. 
Uh, as far as the PDP goes, I don't really have anything planned for it other than the carry it. I could do an update video for it because you guys can see it's wearing a new optic and a new optic shroud. If that's something that you're interested in or you want to see more of the PDP, make sure you're subscribed and make sure you got that bell rung and let me know in the comments exactly you know what you want to see. Throw me a like and share this video if you appreciate what I'm doing since that really helps with the algorithm. And if you really like what I'm doing, consider throwing me that super thanks. That's all I've got for you this time. So until next time, stay safe. Today, the PDP is back with a very popular upgrade. Let's go. Welcome back to the channel, everybody. Today, we've got one of the most popular upgrades for the Walter PDP, the Dynamic Performance Trigger System from Walter. First, we'll take a look at the system, and then I'll give you some things that I like about it, and then some things that I don't like so much about it. But first, before we get rolling, the usual couple things to note. Number one, links to everything that I talk about in my videos can be found on the blog links page, which is linked down in the description somewhere. Number two, all the firearms in this video have been safety checked and we're in a space that's dedicated just for the safe handling of firearms. And number three, last but not least, if you appreciate what I'm doing here, consider throwing me a super thanks. Just like everything else you see on the channel, the PDP and its upgrades are all self-funded out of my own pocket, so any and every little bit definitely helps. Now for those that don't know, the PDP was one of the first guns we reviewed on this channel. I got it from Brownells and I've done a number of videos on it to date and I will link all of those in the description below. I think the last time that you saw it on the channel, it was for an outside the waistband holster review. After that video, I've just been carrying it regularly since it's much easier to carry now that it's colder outside and I've got thicker layers on. As far as upgrades go, the PDP has an optic mounted, it's got a set of co-witness tall sights, and it's got a rail mounted light. It's a very competent package, but one upgrade that I've been wanting to make on this is the trigger system. The factory trigger on the PDP is pretty good, but it's admittedly outperformed by the trigger on another very similar weapon, and one that you've seen on the channel before. The Canic Mete. If you watched my review on the Mete, you know that this trigger is fantastic, and I'm a huge fan, especially at the price point that the Mete comes in at. Now, since the Mete and the PDP are both based on the Walter PPQ, comparing them side by side is basically a direct comparison. Compared to the PDP, the Mete trigger has less take up, it's got a crisper break, and it's got a noticeably shorter reset as well. The trigger pull weight, I believe, is also a little, little bit lighter. The dynamic performance trigger from Walter is supposed to address all of these shortcomings in one easy to install package. Walter says that the system offers a significant reduction in trigger weight, take up, and reset, all things that the Canic does better. The MSRP for this whole system is $180, but sometimes you can find it for less than that on sale. I got this one before Christmas this year, and I used an additional discount code that I found online, and that brought it down to about $115 shipped to my door. The system consists of a new trigger shoe, a new trigger bar, and the complete fire control assembly back here. That new trigger shoe is made of aluminum, and it's flat-faced instead of the curved plastic unit that comes on the PDP as stock. The safety blade is also reshaped, flat as well, and it's thinner and it looks like it's got some lightning holes drilled into the middle of it as well. One last thing to note, the trigger shoe comes in black and the gray that we have here, and it also, if I can get it on camera, has a little Walter logo. The system itself arrives in this nice box, and when you open it up, it's got some paperwork and an installation manual already in the box, which is really nice. As you can see, the foam on the inside is custom cut, the trigger shoe and trigger bar are assembled, but they are separate from the fire control unit. These are the stock pieces, by the way. Now, before we take a look at what kind of performance improvement I've seen from the system, we should first take a look at the performance of this stock system. Now, keep in mind that this particular PDP has a little under 3,000 rounds through the stock trigger system as of the filming of this video. Okay, let's test out the stock trigger pull here. First, we'll take a look at the action. So, I'll verify that we are unloaded, no magazine in the weapon. So we've got a little bit of take up here. So we hit a wall, a really short break, and reset is right there. So break, reset right there. All right, so we'll slide this over this way. All right, take our trigger gauge, zero it out. That one was just over four pounds. That one was right at four and a half pounds. That one was again right at four and a half pounds. So overall, the stock trigger is a pretty nice striker fire trigger action. It's got a good bit of take up, a decent break, and a reset that's a bit on the longer side. The pull weight is under five pounds, which makes it a bit lighter than most PDPs. But I think that this is because of how many rounds that this PDP has through it. Keeping that in mind, let's take a look at the dynamic performance trigger and how it does. Okay, we are back, and as you can see, we've got the dynamic performance trigger all installed in the gun here. So we're going to take a look at its action. Once again, there's no magazine in the weapon, and we are safe. Nothing in the chamber. 
So we're gonna take a look at the take up. Not much, less than stock, which you would hope, right? Because it's advertised in the literature for this trigger. So a little less take up than stock, kind of the same wall here and noticeably shorter break. Check the reset. Nice, shorter. So overall, definitely a shorter break, a uh, shorter reset. I don't know if it's lighter. We'll find that out in a second when I put it on the trigger gauge, but pretty nice so far. Okay, as promised, let's get it on the trigger gauge here. So we're gonna move this over here. I'm gonna zero out our trigger gauge again. That one was close to five pounds, which is actually a little more than stock. It was a little over five pounds. Yeah, we're breaking pretty consistently right at five pounds. So I don't really know what to say. Maybe this will break in just like the factory trigger did and drop down a little bit. Doesn't really feel much heavier. I don't really think I can feel a half pound difference, especially with the shorter action. But I don't know, we'll, we'll do some dry firing and take it out to the range and put some rounds through it and uh, maybe it'll lighten up. We'll see, take a look. Okay, just another quick note here. After shooting this video, I did some digging online and I found that some PPQ owners have experienced this same thing and they've had success getting the pull weight down by putting their factory copper colored trigger return spring back in the gun with the upgraded trigger. Now, after the swap, the pull weight has dropped to just under four pounds, which is where I expected it to be. So things I like about the dynamic performance trigger. Well, mainly the reduction in throw for both the break and the reset. This is where the biggest difference between the PDP and the Canic are for me, like stock for stock. The dynamic performance trigger brings the PDP right up to the Canic's level. The flat trigger shoe is much more to my preference versus the stock curve unit. And the trigger also breaks when the shoe is vertical, so like right around here, which is also to my preference. It makes it easy to stage in between shots. The brake itself is still really clean as it was with the stock system, and the reset is also just as strong as the stock system. Now the increase in pull weight is a bit of a bummer, but considering the fact that I think my PDP is a bit of an outlier, I can't really hold that against the dynamic performance trigger. Cutting in again here, switching those springs out does bring the trigger pull down as we've already seen, so something to consider there. Now, just like everything else on the channel, nothing is perfect, and there are things with the dynamic performance trigger that I don't like. My biggest gripe here is actually the pricing. I can't help but think that this is the trigger that the PDP should have come with out of the box and the fact that I have to spend money, even though it's at a reduced price that I paid just to get it there, isn't ideal for me. Now, I do know that the PDP Pro SD comes with a version of this trigger out of the box stock. But again, I think that this upgraded trigger feels how the PDP should come stock and any upgraded triggers should be an upgrade from there. The fact that the Canic has essentially the same trigger straight out of the box at a lower price point than the base PDP adds a good bit of sting to this too. So overall, I don't like that I have to pay to bring the performance of the PDP up to the level of a gun that's $100 cheaper, but I do like the trigger itself. If you've got a PDP and you're considering this trigger system, I would say to wait until you can find it on sale. If you don't yet have a PDP and are planning on getting one, I would say put the money you'd spend into buying a PDP Pro SD as the extra features that come on the Pro SD along with the version of this trigger make it worth the price jump. So those are my thoughts on the Walther Dynamic Performance Trigger System. If you like this video or you appreciate what I'm doing here, make sure you're subscribed and throw me a like or a comment as it really helps me out with the algorithm. That's all I've got for you guys this time. So until next time, stay safe.